Okay, in this video, I'm going to overview the two background sections of Lab 4. The first is on the cosmic distance ladder. Measuring distances farther and farther out is the primary theme of the rest of this lab sequence. However, measuring distance is perhaps the hardest thing to do in astronomy. It's at least one of the most difficult things to do. You can't just see how far away something is. For example, the person in this figure sees stars A and B to be the same brightness, but that does not mean they're the same distance away. In this case, star A is closer, but lower luminosity, and star B is farther away, but higher luminosity. And because of that, they appear to be the same brightness, but again, they're not the same distance away. You can't just see distance. Because of this, astronomers have developed a bag of tricks for measuring distances farther and farther and farther away. And we call this bag of tricks the cosmic distance ladder. At the base of the cosmic distance ladder, we have the Earth, the size of which, the diameter of which, we measured at the end of lab two. In this lab, we'll use that diameter measurement and the parallax technique, which I'll describe in the next background section, to measure distances within our solar system. In particular, we'll measure the distance to a main belt asteroid and to the planet Venus. We'll then use that Venus measurement to determine the size of the astronomical unit. How big is the Sun-Earth distance? With that in hand, we can go another rung up on the cosmic distance ladder and carry out what is called stellar parallax. This uses the astronomical unit and the same parallax technique to measure distances to nearby stars. And we'll use it to measure the distance to Alpha Centauri, the closest star, it's actually a star system, to our sun. This technique can also be used to measure distances to stars about halfway across our Milky Way galaxy. Now, in the next lab, Lab 5, we'll learn another technique called standard candles. These are objects of known luminosity, and they can be used to measure distances even farther out. We'll begin by using a type of variable star called an RR Lyrae to measure distances across our Milky Way galaxy and a bit beyond that. We'll then use another type of variable star called a Cepheid to measure distances to nearby galaxies. And we'll then learn how to use a type of supernova explosion called a type 1A to measure distances to far away galaxies. Then in lab eight, we'll cycle back to the cosmic distance ladder and we'll learn how to use measurements of a galaxy's apparent recessional speed, how fast it appears to be moving away from us to measure its distance. This technique called Hubble's law can be applied to any galaxy all the way out. But in this lab, we'll begin by learning the parallax technique which applies to the second and third rungs of this diagram and can be used to measure distances within our solar system and to the nearby stars. So let's go down to the next background section in which I'll describe the parallax technique. If you want to measure the distance to an object, one way you can do it is to observe it from two separate locations. You then measure how much the object appears to shift between those two vantage points, its angular shift. If you know the physical distance between those two observing points and you've measured that angular shift, you can then calculate the distance to the object. For example, grab a finger, preferably your own, and put it close to your face. Close one eye, and notice where on the background wall your finger lands. 
then switch to your other eye and notice where it lands. And you can go back and forth and you can see the angular shift. If you can measure that angular shift and you know the distance between your eyes, you can calculate the distance between your face and your finger. And when your finger's close, it should be a pretty big angular shift. Now move your finger far from your face and repeat the experiment. Close one eye, notice where your finger lands on the background wall, shift to the other eye, and notice it's a much smaller angular shift. And with that smaller angular shift, you'll calculate a greater distance. Now, in astronomy, there are two baselines that are typically used. The baseline is the distance between the two observing points. The first is Earth's diameter, or some fraction thereof. And we call this Earth baseline parallax. And it's good for measuring distances within the solar system. You see one observer over here at position A and another observer on the other side of the planet at position B. And they are both observing the same object. The observer at position A sees that object over here around these background stars. But the observer at position B sees the object shifted over here around these background stars. If you can measure the angular shift between these two positions and combine that with the physical distance between these two observing points, you can calculate the distance to this object. Now, when doing Earth baseline parallax, it's very important that the two observers image simultaneously, else your measurement will be contaminated by the object's motion between the first and second observations and won't be a pure measurement of the parallactic shift. Now, the other scenario is for when you want to measure the distance to objects much farther away, such as nearby stars. And for this, you need a much larger baseline. So instead of using Earth's diameter, we use the diameter of Earth's orbit. And since the radius of Earth's orbit is 1 AU, the diameter is 2 AU, two astronomical units, always when doing a stellar parallax calculation. Also, when doing stellar parallax, the observations have to be carried out six months apart because that's how long it takes to get from one side of the orbit to the other. So in this particular example, here we are in January, observing this nearby star, and we see it around these background stars. We then wait six months and observe in July, and the nearby star appears to have shifted to the vicinity of these background stars. Of course, it didn't shift, we shifted our vantage point. So if you measure this angular shift, and if you know the distance between the observing points, in this case, two astronomical units, you can calculate the distance to the nearby star. Now, in both cases, Earth baseline parallax and stellar parallax, the geometry is the same, and it's the same geometry that we've used in the past two labs. The angular shift as a fraction of 360 degrees is equal to the baseline, the distance between the observing points, as a fraction of the circumference of this large circle. And that's the case whether the baseline is Earth's diameter or the diameter of Earth's orbit. In both cases, the baseline divided by the circumference of the large circle is directly equal to the angular shift divided by 360 degrees. And the circumference of the large circle is just two pi times its radius. And the radius is the distance between us and the object we're observing. So for circumference, we substitute two pi times the distance. We solve for distance. 
And then to calculate the distance to the object, you just need to know the baseline, the distance between the two observing points, and the angular shift, which you have to remember to convert two degrees. Okay, that's it for this video.